everyone, this is Ashley Jamerson coming to you from Ashley Lambert Realty. And unlike other days when I am driving in my car, today I am here with Marvin Etienne. He is with NACA. He is the best mortgage counselor I've ran into over there. And I can personally vouch for that because I recently closed the client and it was a very smooth and stress-free process. So I want to take some time and answer some of the questions that you guys have had in the past with a professional. So Marvin, introduce yourself. Thank you, Ashley. My name is Marvin Etan and I am a mortgage counselor uh, with NACA. And so I've been with the company a little over a year now. It's a great company with an excellent product. And so what I wanted to do and, and partnering up with Ashley was help to educate people about what you would need, get a lot of questions answered, so your process could also be as smooth as we had with one of your, or your last clients. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was with. amazing. I remember when I first got an email from him, the email was, did you know your client could get more money? And I said, what? A mortgage counselor that's looking for money for my client? Like that was very awesome that hasn't ever happened before so it was really nice to get an email like that and i think uh, well i know one of the things that made that particular process so smooth was how prepared she was yeah and one of the things that stood out in that case was she called me mm -hmm. um and she said she was ready and we had the intake at that moment and she was ready so that was on a tuesday i believe she was qualified that friday and then we were out looking at property that weekend and pretty much under contract it took us about a week to get under contract but we were under contract very quickly like it was a very like i said very smooth process let's speak a little bit about her being ready what were some of the things that she had ready that made you do the intake so quickly. Her reaching out to introduce herself was mm -hmm. one of the things that stood out. And so in that conversation, I could see some documents in the file already. So she's already uploaded the documents onto her NACA portal. She uploaded do the documents into the portal, but mm -hmm. I think what's important to note is that before we do an intake, we can't see everything. Oh, okay. So we have to get to the credit pool portion Mm -hmm. get your credit pool and the, the other tabs open up okay and so i seen enough to know that she had an id she signed her membership agreement mm -hmm. she paid for her dues already mm -hmm. so it was only a matter of me just collecting a little bit more information verifying what i had in there and pulling the credit and we did that the same day yeah and she was really on top of it from day one on my end as well which is very important um, i have people reach out sometimes and they will say that they're ready and they still have financial issues and hurdles that they need to clear personally before they can start NACA. I know that NACA doesn't look at credit, but you can't have like a completely jacked up situation. Like you can't be behind on your bills. So I think the baseline with our program is saying that the person is ready for home ownership. And there's some things that's indicative of that, mm -hmm. right? And so when we submit your application to, the, to our lender, mm -hmm. so those things that indicate that you're ready is uh, on-time payments. Okay. So if you're paying, and I think the, all things are important, but one of the, if I had the number, it, uh, would be rent your rental payments because mm -hmm. your rental payments are the baseline of saying what you could afford in a mortgage payment so f for some reason that you're not paying your rent on time That's we won't be flag. able to yeah we won't be able to mm -hmm. present your file to somebody saying that you're ready for a mortgage okay and so everybody will qualify so mm -hmm. it's just going to be a matter of when of when mm -hmm. so if someone did have a financial situation and let's say they were late three months ago, how long would it take for them to approve with NACA if they were just late on their rent, like maybe three months ago? So every case is different, mm -hmm. all right? So you can't, you really can't write a manual to like the, the, the different things that encompass these different households. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to say outside of an intake mm -hmm. what their timeline will be. So what I will say to the, the people is that don't worry about so much as where you are, mm -hmm. right? Um, go to a knock your workshop, mm -hmm. uh, get educated about the program, mm -hmm. set up an appointment with a counselor, and then looking at the facts of uh, your particular situation, then we'll be able to make a determination of what needs to be done, what can be advocated for. Because if it's just one late, you know, sometimes life happens. Right. And we target, um, we target low and moderate income families and we know we're especially prone. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. to being a victim of, you know, life taking us away. Okay. And so we won't hold that against you, so we'll just collect the facts and then make a determination. Makes sense. So one of the questions that I get from people that call me from my YouTube is how long will the process take? A lot of people wait until the last minute, like when their lease is almost over to even contact me. And when they bring up NACA, they say, is it too late to start the NACA process? So let's say someone's lease ends in two months. Is that too short of a time to go through the whole NACA process, like from start to finish? So it's not too short of a time, but we don't want to, um, or any counselor, don't want those sort of constraints. All right, so we would just tell you uh, that it takes 28 days to close on a home. That's from contract to closing. That's from contract to closing. Right. Uh, 28 days is the... Um, our process mm -hmm. and so then you have to find a home so that adds to that yes and then you have to get qualified mm -hmm. so depending upon when that person is they may not be able to meet that deadline right so our most recent client was super ready we mentioned that it was like a week a few days before. it was that same with two or three days yeah before she was like approved and so she was approved and then I think the most difficult process was looking I think we looked at maybe eight or nine homes between like Concord and North Charlotte. And we looked at quite a few homes and made some offers on the houses. That was, depending on what your price range is and the fact that it's a seller's market right now, that could make the process a little bit longer. But once you're in a contract, it should be almost easy breezy from there on your end. It's, so. oh well, and again, this is the goal of, of these mm -hmm. videos to make it um, easy breezy mm -hmm. uh, for the person. So once you're on the contract, so you've been qualified, so it's a matter of continuing to keep these documents updated. Yes. Um, and again, it's, it's everyone's particular scenario. Mm -hmm. So at that juncture, you know, I wouldn't advise you taking any vacations if saving is an issue. Right. Right. So mm -hmm. at that point, you're, you're on the home stretch. Yeah, and I really try, well, me personally, I try to find homes that are like move-in ready and they don't need a lot of repairs from what I can see as a realtor. I know that once we have the inspection, they tend to uncover things all the time, no matter what. But as long as the house is in good condition or brand new, brand new is even better with NACA, I tend to see that it like closes fairly easy breezy. All right, because you don't have any added negotiations mm -hmm. with the sellers and having to address the NACA required repairs. Right. Those NACA required repairs. And it's very interesting because like every house on the market is sold as is. So as a realtor, you have to be really good at negotiating and you have to like, I guess, have an A and B option for the buyer and the seller. Like this is what can happen. This is worst case scenario, but this is best case scenario. This is how much it'll cost. So that's very important on the realtor side. It is, and I think it's uh, important to point out how that we we got connected, mm -hmm. and it's the the interactions I had with you mm -hmm. as the realtor. I found it was impressive. Thank you. It was impressive, and so a little I, bit type A. The, the it's type a tad a. bit. <laughs> and so this is how we got to to making these videos mm -hmm. and trying to educate people and help people. Yeah, because it's a really good process. program. Like when people call me, and it probably doesn't help that I was a little bit irritated with other mortgage counselors and didn't have a good experience but it's the really good program for what it does and the interest rate you can't beat it so when people do get mad with NACA and they decide to walk away they can't match it like the lowest I've closed recently with a traditional lender was 4.25 and what did our recent client close with like 2.5? It was definitely below the market rate. Yeah, way sure. below market. Like our home was 3.5. I've closed a 0.5. That was ridiculous, like amazingly ridiculously low. So it's a good program. The goal, again, is for us to make sure that when you guys do do NACA, that you have enough information to make it smooth. Yeah, to make your transition as similarly smooth. And so it does. Mm -hmm. it wouldn't matter any outside conditions, right? Because mm -hmm. if you prepare yourself, right. then what's going on around you, we will want to try to get that to align right. itself with your preparation. So it's kind of hard to miss when you have all the documents. And we're going to, in, in this series, we're going to go over what mm -hmm. documentation they need, how to get that into the file, mm -hmm. um, the different ways to get it into the file. You should keep electronic versions. Google Drive is my friend. Google yeah. Drive is your friend. You have access to it anywhere. Mm -hmm. So you could be at work or out and about. Yeah, because there would be times you would email me and either she would send it directly from her Google file or I would have access and I can just email it directly. Mm -hmm. 
as well. So, because sometimes technology get in the way, and I guess navigating a web file, I, f I feel like it's fairly easy. Mm -hmm. it's, it's in uh, it's intuitive, but. Uh, Sometimes we, we're dealing with people who are not as computer savvy. Yeah, that's why they have a realtor. The realtor is supposed to fill in that gap of savviness as well, like pick it up and scan it in for them if they need to. And this is it's a good note to the mm -hmm. other realtors yeah. as to why some of their clients not having the, um, the experiences that they would like. Mm -hmm. uh, they could take the time to be a, a little bit more engaging. Right. Or, you know, or assisting, that, assisting that person with getting those documents in. Yeah, it's not like a traditional loan where you can sort of kind of get them under contract and then chill a little bit. You definitely have to be more involved as a realtor when it comes to NACA just to make sure that nothing gets lost in the in the file, basically, just following mm -hmm. up. And it's not, it's your job as a realtor, so do it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Is it a myth that NACA never closes on time? So I would say that it's definitely a myth, right? Yeah. So it, just given in all circumstances. Mm -hmm. And so part of what I want to do and, and, and my putting a file together is preparing it mm -hmm. at intake to move through the tr process mm -hmm. to close on time. Right. Right. So we can get these things in the file. We, we, we position it in a way that no matter what underwriter gets it, they'll find it, uh, it acceptable. Mm -hmm. And so again, it's going to be a matter of the person. Right. right and what they're using because if you are if you don't have a scanner or you know life work kids don't don't allow you to you know get the documents in and quickly quickly like if you ask for it like Wednesday morning then you should definitely get it Wednesday at some point in time in order for it to continue within that 28 day process anything outside of that is not your fault the client should have turned it in in time but it, and then again, it's if you don't have the tools, the tools that you really need, mm -hmm. and you're taking pictures of the documents, so that kind of that may be hit or miss, mm -hmm. uh, depending on how it comes out. So it looks good in your phone, right. and it looks good in the email when you send it to me. But by the time I get it into the system, right. the quality may have deteriorated some. Mm -hmm. It may not be in an appropriate file format, and that's a, one of the things we're going to talk about. When we talk about the portal. When we talk about the that portal, awesome it's uh, it's only one file format that you should be uploading the documents in. That's the PDF format. That's in PDF. PDF. Yeah, so no JPEGs or PNGs or anything like that. So, so when it comes to closing on time for me, when people have like outlier type information or outlier situations where it prevents them. Like I've had one lady, she had to wait for her divorce documents. Waiting for the county to give you divorce documents is very difficult. So those are some of the questions I ask about their personal situation, like child support or divorce decrees or separation agreements and things like that. I try to ask those questions up front just so I can have an attorney or someone working on it in the background so it's done. And that has helped out a lot. I've dealt with a lot of people going through divorces. Which it's is very interesting. Which is a whole nother conversation. Yeah, really, because so. NACA, I mean, not even just NACA, but North Carolina, we're a marital state. So they want to make sure that only this person owns the house and not your ex and yourself. And I think that'll open up the door for me to say that when people talk about their experiences mm -hmm. with the program, I don't think that you should rely on what someone is telling you mm -hmm. because they may not be telling you everything yeah they're not going to tell you all their business like yeah that's true they're not, they're not gonna say well i was late i went on vacation and i didn't turn in my documents oh, yeah. tell you the truth. i had to uh, with respect to divorce and mm -hmm. uh different personal uh, repossessions or uh, mm -hmm. things that may have extended their timeline right right which they in some cases it may not have been fair mm -hmm. but it's as the, the system worked, right? right? So the the repossession was voluntary, mm -hmm. um, but a repossession is a repossession. Right. And so there are rules in which it, it falls into, and so we have to follow them. So basically, from what I understand, I may be wrong, but NACA sort of smooths over situations to make home ownership of, you know, something that is easy to accomplish by people. So it sort of lowers the bar a little bit. NACA does, but it still has to, you still have to get approved by the bank and the end result, you still have to, right? So we're a counseling agency and I don't want to say that it, um, it lowers the bar, mm -hmm. but it takes into consideration people in life. Right. So you are not what happened to you two years ago, three years ago, mm -hmm. or even last week. 
Mm -hmm. And so if you had a, a repossession or if you're, you don't have the highest credit score, mm -hmm. right? What's the lowest credit score you've seen that has purchased a home? We don't, I don't even look at the credit score. And what? that's that people should know that. When I'm looking at your, mm -hmm. um, your credit file, mm -hmm. your credit score is something I slide right over. Wow. Uh, I did not even know that. And I've been working with NACO for a while. I, didn't, I, I thought it was somehow part of the process, but you just don't, you personally don't look at it. No, the score. So it's uh, no council really should be looking at the score. The mm -hmm. score may be indicative of payment history. Mm -hmm. Have you been paying your bills on time? But credit score is not something that it, it doesn't indicate the, how much you could get or at what rate. Mm -hmm. you would get it at. Yeah, because everyone, you post the, well not you, but NACA posts the interest rate of the day pretty mm -hmm. much. And everyone that gets qualified or has a contract in that date, they'll get that rate for that day. They'll get that rate. No so matter what. It doesn't matter if you have a 300 or a 850. 300. A 300. I mean, I, I, I could have said Yo, two or it, one. Really? But the, the score has absolutely nothing to do with it. Man. I'm gonna have to put that in big words across the screen. That's that's crazy. So I, I I honestly thought that the credit score had something. That's good knowledge. That's that's like a no. But what I am looking at is your payment history. Mm -hmm. So how that, long of a good payment history? Like you said, repossession two years ago, a year ago. Like when do you stop counting it against someone? So when we're talking about collections, right, because mm -hmm. that would be the category that the repossession falls in, mm -hmm. any collection outside of a two-year period, then what we will require is that you write a letter saying what happened and why it won't happen again. I do have a video regarding letters of explanation. Short, sweet, to the point. They don't need to know what color pants you were wearing when the car got repossessed. They just need to know what was going on in your life. Mm -hmm you know, what happened, why, and why it will never happen again type of thing. And like what you've done to, you know, like saving money, pay your bills on time, like right. that type of thing, nothing in depth. No, I, I think some people feel like it's, they give it more importance than we're giving it. It's, it's meaningful, it's important, mm -hmm. but we don't need to know three pages worth of what happened. Right. You, get, you can answer essentially in a in paragraph. paragraph. One paragraph, because it's a bank. I mean, it's, you, know, you, you look through, like, this is what happened. Oh, okay, yes or no, do I accept it? And then you move on. Mm -hmm. Or you could ask for even more explanation, but I would love to see one paragraph. Just one, one. One paragraph in most cases work. Mm -hmm. There may be one off cases where a person would need to go in more detail mm -hmm. about um, what's going on, uh, especially if it's a case where we, it requires a, some advocating. Mm -hmm. right? so I'm going to tell the story mm -hmm. when I submit the file and I may ask my member to, to, to tell their story themselves. So whoever is reviewing it mm -hmm. can read it from, you know, th their words what happened. Yeah, I think that's really, really good to know because again, life happens. I mean, I know being a mom now, there's lots of moms that have medical bills and we have medical bill conversations. And it's so easy for one to slip through the cracks because all these people are sending you a bill for the same one visit. So it's easy to overlook it and we'll get together with our bottles and have horror stories okay. about baby bills. So it's really interesting. Yeah, Don't fright over what you got going on or what you believe it or the timeline, you mm -hmm. know, uh, attend a workshop, set up an appointment, talk to a counselor, find out exactly what you need to do. Cool. So a lot of people reach out to me from YouTube and they ask me about payment shock. If they go there and they say, they told me I have payment shock for X amount of time. What is payment shock? How much money is payment shock? And is there a way to avoid it altogether? So payment shock is the difference between what you pay in rent mm -hmm. and what you want to pay in a mortgage. Okay. So it's going to be different for different people. Some people won't have it because they want a mortgage payment that is less mm -hmm. than what they're paying on rent. Some people have a 100% payment shot because they're not currently paying any rent. Because they're staying at home after college with their parents and they're saving money and they're zero. They're paying and they're nothing. Zero. So uh, in that case, it would be we would to establish what you could afford in a mortgage payment. It's going to be what you, we're going to look to what you're saving mm -hmm. for a minimum of six months. Okay. So if they wanted a $1,200 or a house that is $1,200 mortgage, they have to prove they can pay $1,200 a month for six months. And so they would like to deposit that into their account or how would you 
assess that they're actually affording the $1,200? So for a $1,200 payment, mm -hmm. um, I will be looking for a savings each month of $1,400. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I say $1,400 is because NACA requires a $200 surplus. Okay. When you become a homeowner, you are responsible for things that you, were, you weren't responsible for when you were renting. Yeah. And so we want to put you in the best position to be able to address those things. And so being able to save is, would, would be that position. Mm -hmm. and so a person who is not paying any rent, I'm going to request that six months of their bank statements and uh, all of their bank statements. All of them. Uh, they every, can't hide them from us. Yes, uh, mm -hmm. they're going to provide all the bank statements mm -hmm. and take a look at what they've been saving. And so in this case, for a $1,200 payment, in our example, mm -hmm. I'm going to be looking for a $1,400 in savings throughout their accounts overall. If they fall short one month, so let's say spring break happens and they're still living the college life and they go on vacation and they skip a month of their payment shock, what happens mm -hmm. then? So I would say that essentially you will be saying that you're not prepared for, for a home ownership. ownership. Exactly, because you still have a mortgage every month even it, though you want to have spring break. Yeah, it's um, definitely, mm -hmm. right? Uh, but if it was Christmas or um, life happened to you. Um, Christmas don't happen. It's every yeah, month, Christmas. every year on the same day is Christmas. And people say Christmas, you know, it's That's, the 25th every year. Every year. So, yeah, you know, we could definitely prepare for it. But it's examples like that mm -hmm. is where I have seen um, a person still, uh, if they fell somewhat short, mm -hmm. then that would have been all right. But the, the more clear cut example would be if, some, you know, just life happened to you, you had to. Um, Mm -hmm. uh, buy a car, some new tires for your car. Mm -hmm. And so again, that discussion will happen with your counselor and it's going to be case by case. But we would advocate as best we could. It but sounds like you guys really do advocate for buyers. Like it sounds like if they really, really want to own a home and they're really trying that you guys will work on their best behalf to get them there and if they're legitly trying. Absolutely. But I think what I want to make clear is that there's not going to be a, a, a great room, a whole lot of room to advocate with respect to payment shock because it's, it's mm -hmm. or what you could afford in the mortgage payment because that's going to be the baseline of our program. Okay. Yeah. When you do the payment, did that twelve hundred dollars is that including taxes and insurance, like the full payment, or is that just principal and interest? No, so that's principal, interest, taxes and insurance. And HOA. So a lot of and people HOAs. are loving townhomes and condos right now because it's more affordable here in Charlotte. We're just finding like really nice townhomes at a better price and they're forgetting about that monthly HOA. So that includes everything. 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 So. Recently, I've had a few clients get put into the non-priority bucket with NACA. And that's not always a good bucket because no one wants to hear that they're not a priority. But in NACA, there's non-priority and priority. Can you give us an explanation of what that is and how we can be prepared if they do fall into that non-priority bucket? And so, yeah, absolutely. So the, one of the first things I want to say is that it is not anything that someone should look at, you know, as if they can't purchase what they want to purchase. Mm -hmm. They can't have the, the, their dream home, essentially. Mm -hmm. So NACA is here to primarily for low and, low and modern income families. Right. But uh, however, anyone can come through our program. Mm -hmm. And so if you make above the median income, which is so it's going to be different in charlotte is seventy one thousand three hundred dollars and that's as a household as a household okay the so purchasing members in the household mm -hmm. if the combined income is over the median income in your area mm -hmm. then you would be considered a non-priority member mm -hmm. and so what i think what people really need to understand is that you can purchase your dream home, but it's just going to take, you have to be more intentional. Mm -hmm. And so that's something that your NACA housing counselor mm -hmm. is going to take care of along with your realtor mm -hmm. to help you find that dream home. So the process is going to be the same. Mm -hmm. You're going to let your realtor know wh what you want in the home mm -hmm. and they're going to go out and find that home for you. And we're going to make sure that it, is, it, it meets the qualifications. And basically, it's just like an extra step for realtors. So like my non-priority client that I had, they told me the situation and we had to enter in the address. And so like in the mornings or like every other day, I would log on to the MLS and copy and paste the addresses into the note section of the ones that actually 
are in the non-priority areas. And then she was able to find a home from that list of houses. So it's just like another filter. It's just not a in your face filters. A lot of realtors will be annoyed with it, but it's just like an extra step that you just put on your planner and do it. You know, it's not a big, a big deal. No, it's not. And I have a lot of conversation with people who are concerned about that, mm -hmm. but it's really nothing to be concerned about. Right. But the whole goal of NACA is the low to moderate. And those people would be priority basically and can purchase anywhere. I wouldn't have to do that extra step. Is that right? non priority members tend to be in a position where they they may not need the program right. um, or they may want to come through the program for you know whatever their reasons are. For the interest rate. For the interest rate to I participate mean, 3. in 5, that. that's like almost one full percent less than market right now. And you closed on someone who was uh, 4.25 and then my NACA client was 2.25. Uh -huh. We did 3.5. I mean that's a lot of savings per month. That's like Almost three hundred dollars difference, three four dollars difference, easy. And over the term of thirty years, is more than a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, so it's it's worth it, you know, worth the drama. <laughs> no. For for thirty to forty five days, it's definitely worth it. And so this is why we're doing these videos, so we could uh, get rid of the myths, educate people in a way that when they come into their counseling session, mm -hmm. they're ready. Yeah, and that's just when people call me from my other videos and they are interested in NACA. I try to like gauge where they're at. Every now that I have a client that just, they don't have anything together. They think that NACA is gonna be their savior. If they are on a fixed income, does NACA give loans on fixed income? Like if they're getting social security and things like that, well, can you purchase a home with that? Absolutely. So that's, um, we don't discriminate uh, with respect to your income, mm -hmm. uh, where that's coming from. And so that person can most certainly get along. Cool. I mean, like, there's like so many questions that come through. I'm going to have to weed through them all. And definitely I'm going to post this video probably like two days from today. You won't know it's two days from today. You'll just see the video. But when I post it, if you have additional questions, definitely put them down in the comments. This is not going to be our last video. And we're definitely going to like keep this going. So the more questions you put down, the more questions I'll have to bring him to my home and answer. I think that's just very important because even there's a lot of sellers here in the Charlotte area who have this really bad stigma and it's really hard for sellers to accept NACA loans because they're worried that it won't close on time. But what I've seen recently, more so recently, is that NACA's required repairs are repairs that any buyer would want done to their home, like wood rot. and water heaters that don't meet code and things like that. Any buyer would want that fixed. So it's not, you know, just don't sell a crappy house. I mean, there's no other nice way to put it. Just don't sell it. I'm going to fight just as hard if it was a, a traditional loan, if it wasn't NACA. So I just think it's important for people to not stress about it too much. No, don't stress. Um, have your ducks in a row for sure. Don't. Definitely have your ducks in a row. And this will not be our last video. Okay. I would hope to get a video on every payment shock and the budgeting part and the budgeting part the, is huge the income part you learn a lot about yourself like how many amazon packages like how much does that really add, add up? up to you yeah. my husband and i wasn't married at the time and when we were doing our separate budgets and had to come together as engaged people and we had to realize how much we spent on amazon mm -hmm. individually it weren't many like amazon packages for a while we really uh, whipped it into shape so the swipes do add up. They do. Starbucks, kava. I love kava. I love kava. $13 wheat and grain bowls add up. Oh, definitely. <laughs> so I'm going to wrap this video up. Again, if you have any questions, comments, concerns about NACA, put all those questions below. I'll answer the questions. Marvin is going to have his own YouTube channel here soon and all of his contact information will be below. So make sure you subscribe to his channel and ask him questions. And if you're in the Charlotte area, definitely reach out to him, but all of North Carolina, are you licensed in any other states or can you do all the states? So I think we're at 10 and counting. 10 what? 10 states that we could close remotely in. Oh, well, you let me know what those 10 states are and I'll put those below. Cause I've had people reach out to me from New York, California, Florida, Massachusetts before, like everywhere. And I only do real estate in North Carolina. 
Like I'm never going to be licensed anywhere but North Carolina. <laughs> so again, I will talk to you guys soon. Don't forget to subscribe and thumbs up this video. Bye.